Hi everyone. Hello. Hi guys and girls. Uh, welcome to the Node.js Hack Night. Uh, I am Vishal Parpia. Uh, I'm supposed to be your mentor, um, but frankly, I'm also. Uh, well, I mean, I've been using Node for a while now. Um, we've used it in production in a couple of places. Um, I run a company called Active Element, and um, we run also a small uh, cloud consultancy called Cloud Cover. Uh, we write applications for a few companies over here in Pune, as well as a few companies in America. Um, we're a very small group of folks, so we like to work on cutting edge technology. Uh, Node.js turned into one of my favorite programming languages almost instantly. Uh, I want to have a quick show of hands over here. How many of you have done Node.js before? Have used it before? All right, cool. So, can you guys hear me? Yes. At the back. All good. I think it's fine. They can hear me. I can project my voice. Um, so I'm going to jump straight in. Um, since a lot of you guys have never used Node before, I'm going to give you... Alright, so firstly this, whatever I'm going to talk about today, everything is just like blatantly stolen from a talk that was done uh, a while ago by the guy who made Node.js. Um, I reckon it was in 2011, he presented to the PHP users group in San Francisco back then. and. Um, yeah, it went out pretty well, and um, he, he touches upon uh, some fairly key aspects of Node and why it's cool and what's different about it, which is why I thought it was perfect for this. Um, what I'm hoping to do is to give you guys an idea of why I use Node personally, um, and then go through just basically a little demo of what you can do with Node and what makes it different from other languages that you might have used, uh, and hopefully then we'll start hacking. Um, all right, so. Node is basically a bunch of libraries that are written on top of uh, Google's V8 JavaScript engine. So that's the stuff that's running under the hood in Chrome. Um, it is, because it's running in Chrome, uh, and because Google has very, very smart people working on it, it is crazy, crazy fast as far as a JavaScript engine is concerned. Um, in fact, it's, it's so fast that it, it rivals you know, your PHP, Ruby, and you know, uh, the, the Python guys, the Ruby guys, the, the PHP guys are all like, you know, jump down your throat and say that's not true, but um, you know, benchmarks and stuff um, will prove that fact, have proved that fact all over the web. You can go check it out. Um, the reason for that is because of the competition in the browser space. So because browsers are so cutthroat and you know, everyone's vying for market share and it's such a huge aspect of computing today in general, um, big companies throw a lot of resources at the problem and that means that JavaScript compilation, pre-compilation, all the stuff that happens now happens really, really fast and turns into something that works a lot better and a lot faster because the projects themselves are well funded. There are you know people that do this for a living working on it all the time and that obviously improves the product. That's the V8 we'll um, Alright, so I'm just quickly going to step through a few reasons why you should use Node. Um, firstly, presumably everybody over here works with web technology at some level. Um, you already know JavaScript because there's no way that you're writing a web page that doesn't use JavaScript today, right? Someone's using jQuery for something. Um, it is really, really fast. I said that before, but it bears repeating. Um, it's what is called event-driven or non-blocking or asynchronous, right? And the thing is that a lot of new languages and a lot of even older languages, like .NET says that you can do async with, with .NET, right? And you know, technically speaking, it is true. But the reality is that if you just picked up .NET and took like a hello world example, it's not asynchronous out the box. You, you have to do stuff, you have to change the way that it operates in order for that to happen. Node.js is asynchronous out of the box. You turn it on, that's all you get. In fact, you you have to try really hard and you have to be a really bad programmer to make it synchronous, all right? That I can't, you don't have to do anything and out the box it just works, it does the job that it's supposed to. So what's good about that? It makes a lot of sense for things like when you're doing networking. For instance, 
go fetch a URL, right? Go to google.com and get it back. Um, if you do that in something like PHP, you have to wait for that curl request to complete for you to get the, 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 the contents of google.com and then you can start messing with it, right? That doesn't happen with Node.js. The, the thread keeps executing other things and that works really great for things like database queries as well because you know after you fire the query, what are you doing? You're just waiting over there for the database to return some values. Does not happen in Node. So that's not gonna block your execution. It's not gonna make your web server slow. It's not gonna do all the things that we hate about you know all the stuff that we do on a daily basis. Um, all the performance bottlenecks that you tend to see in web applications come from stuff that you're waiting for. Um, if you're, for instance, building something on top of somebody else's API, um, I don't know, like let's say a travel site, and you're waiting for a response from somebody else's server. Um, if you do that in PHP, after you hit you know a certain number of threads, your server's going to fall over. You're going to need to scale. You're going to need to have another server. That does not happen with Node. It just keeps going. And I'll show you how that works. JavaScript also is actually a pretty cool language. Now, a lot of people will say, no, JavaScript's a crap language. Uh, you know, it's, uh, and it, it doesn't have a lot of the things that people that come from a more strongly typed world um, will say. But it does have some pretty cool things like closures, anonymous functions, and prototypes, which, you know, if you've been using JavaScript, you're already using these things. You might not know what they're called, but you're definitely using them. Some of the syntax and examples that you get off of jQuery.com use anonymous functions. Um, and prototypes are used extensively throughout uh, your uh, major libraries that are in use on the internet. So all these things work really well at the server side as well as the client side. So you're already used to using it on the client. Um, it works great on the server as well. All right, so in order to install Node, I'm just going to tell you to read the manual, uh, read the FN manual at nodejs.org. Um, it's actually really, really simple to do. There's all kinds of flavors over here. You can download it for Windows, download it for Mac. Um, there are binaries. You can compile it if you feel like it. Um, it's going to be a prerequisite for tonight, so it would be great if you guys can go to nodejs.org and start downloading it. Um, it's not a very big executable, but um, you know, if you're going to compile it on your computer, then it's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, if you're on a Mac, I recommend using Homebrew. You probably already have Brew, then you can just like you know uh, do a Brew install uh, uh, node, and it'll work. All right, so I'm going to jump straight into demos over here um, and start writing some code. So you can use any old text editor. Basically, when you once you've installed Node, right? Um, you can just run node from the command line and you get that. And that's that's a JavaScript prompt. Right? So that's just like your console inside Chrome or Firefox or whatever. So you can you can write your you know you can write code over here and it'll it'll execute. Um, Hello? Is this better for you guys? Yeah? Alright, awesome. Um, so yeah, you can I don't know how I'm gonna be able to type and use this, but uh, I'll try my best. Uh, yeah, so this is this is a full you know JavaScript console. You can you can use it to do all the usual stuff. You can you can create variables. You can you can create arrays. You can do whatever, um, and that's pretty cool and it's useful. Um, I often like take raw JSON data and just paste it in here and create objects out of it so I can manipulate it. Uh, it's it's not really something you're supposed to use in production or whatever, but it, it, it helps me for the minor tasks. And if I want to verify like syntax, uh, JavaScript syntax, which I'm about to use in a program, I'll drop to this and, and start messing with it. Um, right. So the node accepts the, the argument can be um, the file that you want it to run, which is basically how you would normally use it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a, a small program uh, just to demonstrate the asynchronous nature um, of Node and then run it using uh, the command line. Sorry. All right, so does everyone know what set timeout does? Hands up if you know. Yeah, okay, cool. 
So I'm just going to write a, a quick little set timeout function over here. All right, so um, super easy, right? Uh, what this is going to try and do is write hello world. Um, the only difference over here is obviously we've put world inside a set timeout function, which means that it'll happen after one second, right? So you run that over here, and that worked great, right? Super easy. Um, the, the major thing that you've got to realize over here is that uh, other programming languages will let you do things like sleep. Uh, there is no sleep in JavaScript. In, in, in Node.js for sure, there's absolutely no sleep. Which means that you can't suspend the thread. You can't say, don't do anything, don't execute anything for another one second, and then come back and do something, right? What's happening over here is, Node is still processing stuff, it's just that it's idling. So Node will idle, but it will never ever sleep. So if you were to do this in PHP, and you wrote like, you know, you want to write echo, you write echo, hello, and then you write sleep, and then you write echo world. That's not the same thing. We are writing, it's, it's basically when I execute this, it's blazing straight past set timeout, and it's writing hello to the console. And then after a second, that callback executes, and it's firing console.log world, right? The critical aspect over here is the fact that node does not wait at all. You have to understand that. And that's going to make things hard for you later because you can't just keep writing functions over here and expect the, the previous function to have completed by the time the next one executes, right? So when they say asynchronous, they weren't joking. It's actually completely asynchronous, right? Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to change uh, timeout to interval. Do you guys know what interval does? Yeah? So interval is basically going to execute the, the world statement um, over and over again without stopping, right? And so you notice that it didn't exit. It's it's just staying inside node, right? It, previously when you ran hello world, it spat me back to the, the command prompt. Node's still executing over here and it's going to keep executing as long as there's an event that can happen. So this is another critical aspect of Node. Node will only stay alive, the, the script will keep running, only if it knows there is another event, there is another callback that can be executed. Right? Otherwise, it's just gonna, it's gonna quit, the application's gonna leave. Um, why is this important? Well, this usually, um, you know, a, a script reaches the end and that's the end of it, but you wanna think about this from the perspective of this is basically was, was created for browsers and stuff, right? So there's an event loop running over there trying to track your keyboard actions and your mouse movements and stuff like that. We take advantage of that because what happens over here is the second that your compute that your your uh, your program is done, it automatically and 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 basically uh, without you doing anything extra will exit gracefully, and you don't have to worry about it like staying open. Node's very good at counting how many callbacks are there, and when it comes down to zero, it just quits. All right, so that's the easy stuff. Um, what I've done is I've also written a couple of programs over here that are super easy. So if you... Yes, it is. And it's not coming on. Thanks. Did the battery die? Can you read that? All good? All right. So there's a, um, should I keep going? I think they need them. Those guys would have a hard time.
Yeah. Just go ahead. Okay. Sorry, guys. I don't think that we're going to get a mic that works. Um, all right. So, what's happening over here is, firstly, we're creating. So, this this little require statement at the very top. This is very important for you to understand. What's happening there is, I am requiring an external library, and I am importing that module into my current namespace. Right. So, what's happening is. There is a separate module that's built into Node called HTTP and it allows you to create HTTP servers and also allows you to perform client actions like gets and posts and stuff like that. So the full HTTP implementation lives inside that HTTP library. And you can add any number of libraries to your project simply by using that first line. So as long as you require it, you set it to a local variable, then you can access that variable directly. Hello? Awesome. All right. So um, immediately after that, we're firing create server, which is effectively creating an HTTP server within Node. And I'm binding it to port 8888. Right? So it's going to listen on port uh, quadruple eight. And what it does is, hello world again. So uh, not very complicated at all. All right, and it's running. You'll notice that it has not exited because when I create the server, it's basically listening on that port so it knows that there's events that can occur and therefore there are callbacks that can execute and therefore node will stay active as long as that HTTP server doesn't crash. So I want to hit it, so I'm going to just curl to it. And there you go. Hello world. So that's being served from Node. Not very exciting. What I want to show you here, though, is a couple of things. This is the header. All right. What's important for you to see over here is two things, connection and transfer encoding. And both these things are possible now because you're running on HTTP 1.1. Um, not all web servers can do that, which might seem crazy because, you know, 1.0 is a long time ago, but 1.1 allows you to do these two other things. So the first thing is Keep Alive. What Keep Alive does is it tells whatever's receive, receiving the, the content that that connection is going to stay open, which means that all that TCP IP overhead of creating the, the connection to the socket, all that stuff is done once at the beginning, and then it doesn't happen again. So every time that you make subsequent requests to this web server, it doesn't have to set it up again which is what you want. You want it to be as fast as possible. As you're browsing around on different pages, that browser doesn't need to keep closing the connection and opening it again. This is something that wasn't possible with 1.0. And the second thing is transfer encoding chunk. What that allows you to do is it doesn't require you to know the length of the content before you start sending. Right? That might seem trivial, but it's really important because for instance, let's say that you were doing some kind of a database query on the server, right? And you didn't know how much data you were going to get back from that query. You don't know how many bytes are coming back, right? Um, because everyone's using variable length. Uh, but when that data comes back, you can just start sending it. You can just start streaming it straight back to the client. And you don't have to worry about buffering it at the web server. Otherwise, what happens is every single time that you fire a query or you read a file from the disk or anything of that sort, you usually have to create a buffer. You have to have a variable in memory which is going to sit over there and collect the whole file and then push that whole file down the HTTP tunnel, right? That's not happening over here at all. What's happening is the second that that data comes into Node, it's pushing it straight down that socket and it's reaching your web browser. So there's nothing, there's no additional memory overhead at the server level. So you can imagine what that does when you're dealing with you know, thousands and thousands of concurrent requests. It becomes really, really fast. Both these things happen by default. You can change them, but you know, by default, this is the way that it works. And um, well, that kind of makes uh, the, the web server at least kind of special. Um, the web server is actually built on top of the standard TCP IP stuff. And what that means is that you can also write a plain old socket server, like an old fashioned telnet, connect to me and start sending data kind of server, right? And that's what this thing is. So in this case, we're requiring a different module called net. And net is kind of the underlying um, 
library that is being used by uh, HTTP as well. And what you can do over here is you can create another server and you can say, okay, this is a, an echo server and whatever comes in, send that back over the socket. So this is really, really simple. It's basically just sending the same stuff that I've received, whatever you type out, it's sending it back to the client. So just to demo this, I'm gonna just quickly tell net to it. Whoops. So my old HTTP server is still running. I'm gonna have to change it and write the TCP server. There we go. So it says echo server, and whatever I type over here, this keeps coming back to me. Um, it would be cool if uh, I could get other people to connect to this and start typing. Is that possible? Maybe we'll mess with it later. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna change the code and stuff too. I don't know how much time do we have. Are you okay? Maybe I'll do that offline. All right, so what we'd have to do is effectively create an array of everybody that connects to this socket, and then I'd be able to broadcast it. But I don't feel like doing that right now, so I'm going to skip over that. Um, so there's there's all kinds of good stuff, and there's a couple of reasons why people think that Node is not uh, such an awesome language. And while this is the Node.js hack night and we're all going to be stuck with it today, uh, I just want to address one specific issue which everyone keeps bringing up about callbacks. So everyone says that, oh, you know, Node gets into callback hell pretty quickly. And uh, what, that, what they mean when they say that is Almost all your functions, because of the asynchronous nature of the op of the uh, of the language, require a callback. So, for instance, in the case of even our uh, our easy peasy demo, right? This function over here, that's a callback because it says when I'm done with waiting for a, you know a thousand milliseconds, call this function. Well, when you do stuff like database access, so for instance, if I was to include you know, a MySQL library and then access a select statement, there would be a callback when that select statement got done. And if I wanted to get a web page and then act upon it, there would be a callback there, and you know, so on and so forth. What tends to happen is you tend to start nesting your callbacks deeper and deeper and deeper. Well, that's true, and there are many, many different ways to solve that. But I think that the callbacks are actually a great design pattern. So it's not something that's a negative, it really requires you to ex exercise some kind of, uh, you can do it with callback, hell, like nest it all the way in and you know keep tabbing and tabbing and tabbing your code, but you can also create functions instead of having them be anonymous, right? So for instance, in this case, rather than just, just having the function name over here, I mean the, the, the asynchronous, I mean the, the anonymous function over here, um, you could just have it be, uh. All right, and this would work just as well. So now suddenly you've moved your what used to be a callback and what would have been deeper in the in the stack, you moved it out. And it gets called just the same, and it works just the same, and it allows your code to be quite um, elegant. Uh, you can even create modules with, uh, with functions attached and have them be completely separate. So that particular problem of it being callback hell, I'm not so convinced about it. Um, there's also uh, things like promises that you can use. If you guys have ever dealt with promises in, uh, in jQuery, uh, that was something that was introduced fairly recently. Uh, those work in Node as well. Uh, and it's a very cool uh, design pattern. Uh, so effectively, I, I, don't, I don't buy that, that argument. Another very, very cool thing about Node, and I think this is the last thing that I'm going to stress on, is the package manager. So Node comes with NPM, uh, 
NPM is the node package manager and what it allows you to do is install and manage all sorts of separate libraries and packages from the command line really, really easily. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly do a little demo here. Alright, so I wanted a MySQL driver um, and I just did npm install MySQL and it went ahead and downloaded all the appropriate stuff. So that's the version that we're using and MySQL has two dependencies. It has a de dependency on require all and on big number.js. Both those were downloaded automatically and now inside my program I can go require MySQL and I'll have access to MySQL. Just like that, there are literally like hundreds of thousands if not millions of modules out there that can do pretty much everything that you're looking for. Um, and we're going to use them all a lot tonight because you're going to have to, you know, uh, be consuming a whole bunch of external APIs and presumably we're not going to be able to reinvent the wheel in one night. So just one more thing that I want you to see over here. When you download this, when you run uh, a uh, NPM install, what happens is, so this folder, node.js, sorry, this is node modules, that, uh, that folder gets created automatically by NPM. And anything that's in there can be used in your require statements. That includes modules that you yourself have written. So as you can see, there's a folder called MySQL in here, and that contains the code for the MySQL driver. You'll notice that this folder also has a node modules folder. If I quickly go in there, you'll see that the dependencies of MySQL live inside that folder. Why is that interesting? It's interesting because these dependencies have specific version numbers. Version numbers that are compatible with the MySQL driver. When, say, bignumber.js gets updated by the person that runs that, it's not going to impact you. Meaning, even if you're using bignumber.js and the latest version outside this folder, MySQL will still use the one in here, which I mean, if you've ever had to deal with, you know, dependencies and packages and having to worry about which version is with which module, this is like a godsend. I mean, this is fantastic. And this actually allows you to do something else, which is, and something that we do at Active Element. You can commit these inside your Git repo because the versions and everything will get pushed to the server correctly. And since everything lives inside the node modules folder, your dependencies and making sure that the version numbers are right on the server happens automatically. So that's, that's like a huge deal for me. Uh, I've had a whole bunch of problems in the past and this just kind of fixes that for me. All right, so like I said, uh, amazing version and uh, dependency segregation and many, many modules. So you can do a quick GitHub uh, search and you can probably find literally hundreds of thousands of different NPM uh, repos and uh, node modules that you can just plug and play, start, start working. That's it. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'm going to be here all night. <laughs> uh, so you know, feel free to come and ask. And um, I think that we're going to take a break. Oh. We're going to be talking about the uh, proposals that were up on uh, hacknight.in and then we're going to take a chai break and then start hacking. Alright, so awesome, uh, looking forward to it.